Hey guys, it's Boomer, and I have a super exciting announcement. We here at Service Entrance People are now officially brand ambassadors for Reaper Apparel Company. We could not be more excited to join their roster and to help promote their brand and their entire community. And just like Pixie and I have battled anxiety and depression, so have the folks at Reaper, and they know that the present is not something to waste. It's all about trying to be the best version of ourselves every single day and making our dreams come true like we're doing here on Service Entrance People and the folks at Reaper are as well. So please join the Reaper community. Check them out. Go to reaperapparelco.com. Use the coupon code Service Entrance People for 10% off all of your purchases and you can check out the links in our facebook and instagram to get 15 percent off as well that's reaperapparel.com promo code service entrance people you gotta make a reservation it's very difficult to get in well it's okay i'll use the service entrance i'll see you at nine Welcome and bienvenidos to another episode, a very special episode of Service Entrance People. I am Boomer. And I am Pixie. Hola. Hola, Pixie. (laughs) For those of you who are new to the show, just jumping in, this podcast is for and about the gritty, underpaid, underprivileged service industry workers of the world. Unite. We have clearly made some wrong turns in our lives because no matter what, we have ended up here in jobs that no matter our talents, our arts, our skills, we end up dealing with the infamous Karens and Florida Mans. Florida Man. And Mr. and Mrs. Von Uppity mm. on a daily basis. Day in and day out, we walk through the parking lot of broken dreams, and we enter through the specially marked door. You know the door. It's the, the service entrance door. That is correct. If you're interested in listening and sharing in the war stories of the, the industry, and if you're curious as to what us are really thinking, we are going to share with you stories of the strange, shocking, and hilarious, because laughing is the only way that we know how to make it through. So, so true. This industry is one that we've come to truly love (laughs) and love to hate and hate to love. (laughs) I can't even say it with a straight face sometimes. Although you will hear war stories, horror stories, rants and bitching that we actually do have to work at work. Son of a bitch. We kid because we care. Yes. There's nothing that we would rather be doing except maybe this here podcast for you. Correct, Amundo. Also, please do us a favor. If we are not for you, we don't give a shit. Go ahead and listen anyway, okay? Hate, Hate listen, listen, rage, rage listen, listen, binge, binge listen. listen. Heckle us because we know that the only thing better in this world than a good horror movie is a terrible horror movie. More on that later. <laughs> I see what you did That's there. That's a fucking thing this week. Also, if you don't like us, you can practice the greatest method of world living one could ever do. The best thing in your entire world that you can do right now. Out of charity, really. Out of spite, but also love. And that is press play and, and walk, walk away. away. That's right. Turn us on, tune us in, and then get the fuck out of the room. <laughs> if we really bother you Turn us on and much. leave us hanging. Yeah, just, you know. Like a sad man at a strip club. Turn it on and go walk out the door. <laughs> just turn around now. You're not welcome anymore. Or maybe we're not welcome. I don't know. Aww. Regardless, give us those juicy, juicy spins. Even if you hate us, yell at your uh, podcast listening device and tell us how much we suck. We're, we're cool with that. Finally, one last disclaimer. This show, like the industries that we cover, comes with some spicy fucking language. Ay, 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 muy caliente. You have been forewarned. Disclaimer, Fuego. disclaimer, hold harmless, hold harmless. <laughs> Please do us a favor. Listen, like, rate, review, subscribe, and share. Five stars, Cinco. by the way. Cinco stars. Five, five stars. And uh, leave us a review on whatever platform you may be listening to. It helps us jump up those charts that we need so badly to prove our worthwhileness and to validate our every single minute of daily existence, or at least for me. I don't know how it is for you, Pix, but that's that's me. That's I'm my the thing. one internally shouting, por favor, por favor. And as you like to have them suggest anyway, to, to have folks do... Do the whole predictive text, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yeah. We have this five-star review from Concerned Matt in the United States. Don't be concerned, honey. It's okay. This is the review. Five stars. I want to get pizza with these guys, period, and then get drunk. Not us drunk. Get himself drunk after getting pizza for us, I'm guessing. Regardless, it's a great fucking review. I kind of want to just have pizza and get drunk with him now. I just want to have pizza and get drunk. I don't care who it's with. (laughs) That sounds like my kind of thing. So please rate, review, 
five stars. Help us get up the charts. You can also help us in a myriad of other ways, including becoming a producer. Patreon.com slash service entrance people. Any producership, any level, you get free stuff and you get access to bonus materials. The higher you go in the patronage, the cooler the stuff you get. Plus, if you are a Von Uppity, an executive producer, you get your name said at the end of every episode. There's also producer credit. doesn't cost you a thing. Just send us a bunch of stories. Go to our email, serviceentrancepeople at gmail.com. You get to become a content producer that way. You can also leave us a voicemail, 854-345-7721, if you're not into the whole, you know, typing as well. If you're also not interested maybe in doing a full year-long commitment, you can go to paypal.com and donate to us, like we always say, a dollar or a million, it don't matter. At Service Entrance Peeps. You can message us on Facebook if that's quicker for you. So there, Service Entrance People Podcast is the name. Go to our page, message us there. Or you can uh, go to Instagram at Service Entrance People Pod because it's all meta, baby. So you can DM us. Girl, who's all up in your DM? Hopefully people who are listening to this podcast. I hope so, too. We have also taken brave new steps, and you can find us on the TikToks as well as YouTube. That is at Service Entrance People. That's Service Entrance People, but with a PPL, not the full people. We could just say Service Entrance PPL, I think, would there be the go. easier. That's our ticking talk, and then YouTube is just at Service Entrance People. This next part of the program is what? Highly sponsorable. Hopefully it's becoming very much less so, but for now it is still able for you to go out there, contact us, and become a sponsor of the the Shifty Shifty of of the the week. Week. This week we are staying in Port Royal, South Carolina, and we are going to be delightfully boozing up from our friends at Shell Ring Arrow Works. So this week... I'm trying to keep my girlish figure intact here, okay? (laughs) So I'm going to uh, be health conscious and drink a Nautical Light 98 from Shell Ring Ale Works. It is a ultra session ale, 3.8 ABV, but only 98 calories. Oh, wow. So it's going to help me get my slim, trim swimsuit body (laughs) <laughs> that I will not be able to display anywhere because we don't get time to go to the beach. Or the pool. Or the pool or anything. So the Lands and Light is going to help guide you, they say. The Ultra Session Ale will do the same. It's only 98 calories, hints of grapefruit and orange peel rounded out with a nutty sweet profile. The Nautical Light 98 is going to guide my taste buds home. I am stoked and away we go. Oh, I did a good one this week. I did a good pop. All right. Bravo, bravo. Thank you very much. All right, here we go. Whoa. They got it right, man. That is oh. a that is a really good summery type of out at the pool or beach kind of beer. Nice. Good on you. All right, Shell Ring. Big fan. <laughs> Big fan. And you, Pixie, what are you doing today? I am doing the Hop Doctor, and by that I mean drinking the uh, Hazy India Pale Ale Hop Doctor. 6.5 ABV, so I should be good <laughs> and be knockered, me. yeah. <laughs> it says, our year-round hazy and juicy IPA with notes of mango, pineapple, and orange. You know how I feel about that pineapple. You're a fan. I am a huge fan. The Root Doctor is in with the hops to heal your new compulsion. So let's nice. see. Nice popper, All Pixie. right? Mm-hmm. God, I love pineapple. It's so good. <laughs> I don't know what is it with me and fruity beers, but I absolutely just, I love them. It's you do. so and, good. And you are firmly team pineapple on your pizza But this as is well. also a more masculine beer. Like, it definitely has that IPA taste to it that's just citrusy all around. It's good. Well played, Shell Ring. Well played. We see what you're doing here. <laughs> all right. Uh, niceties aside, it is now time to dive in, I do believe, to episode 35 of Service Entrance People. Mm-hmm. And this week's episode is entitled, no special title, it's just the Courtney Gaines episode. Aww. That's right. Uh, We are going to be joined momentarily on the telephones by friend of the program, Courtney Gaines. And, well, we'll we'll tell you about the concept of the show and, and, and all of that stuff here in a second. All right, Pixie, are you ready for this? Nope, not even kind of. Perfect. Wouldn't have it any other way. So today is a super duper special episode of the show. I could not be more excited. Um, Episode 
35 yeah. of service entrance people. And we have our first guest on the show. If I do say so myself, it's a fucking good way to start. Absolutely. We have a friend of the program, friend of ours, Mr. Courtney Gaines on with us today. You can only go up from here, man. Exactly. No. <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. This is, we are the epitome of we're going to peak early on this fucker. <laughs> and then after the, after you, it's just all downhill. It's slow fade into oblivion. <laughs> Backstory on this is that one of our better commented on episode themes for the show is the bad reviews. Yeah, everybody of, loves of the bad places reviews. that we have worked, and uh, through the course of our day jobs, we have uh, gotten to become friends with and hang out with Courtney and the Courtney Gaines Group. Which, by the way, Facebook, go check now. Instagram, all of the social media that I have no idea about. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney and I were talking one day and I was explaining, you know, that we were doing an episode with the bad reviews of this of our places we've worked. He dug the idea and thought it would be fun to do one of movies that he's been in. And Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was a great idea. Now that we're here, I'm like, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm going to get mad. I don't know. <laughs> but but that's perfect. That's <laughs> Just don't get mad at us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's all your fault, man. I, I mean, it's it's probably it, it probably is. Uh, <laughs> Why not? We're not at work, so it might be our fault somewhere. That's true. <laughs> that is true. And to be fair, Pixie and I get very angry when we do these. Like, we relive the trauma with every single bad review. So, you know, I guess it, it is only fitting if there is a little bit of anger that pops up. <laughs> but we're in a safe Who space. Who knows where it'll go? <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are absolutely Robin Williams hugging Will Hunting at this point. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get into that, though, we do want to talk about the new movie, which came out on Friday, AMC Theaters, The Wrath of Becky, yeah. which you are like, we have been beating down the door to try to get ourselves I am pumped. in a position to get the hell out and go watch that because, dude, it looks freaking amazing yeah is it is it, uh, we're out in the you know southeast right so like is it is have you been find any place close to see it yet because uh i don't know where it is i think that there's an amc theater in savannah like oh, yeah? yeah we've been we've been scouring we've been totally scouring because yeah, see see there you go that's not good so obviously it's in select theaters yep. and uh and yeah i haven't seen it yet either it got in the south by southwest but uh you know the truth of the matter is the uh Quiver distribution were too cheap to fly me up, fly my ass out there, so I didn't see it. Yet. What the? Yeah, Savannah, Georgia, uh, by the way. Okay, there is some yeah. in Savannah. Awesome, good. Well, that's yeah. that's at least very good for us. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet either, but I'm excited to see it. I did see, I saw, I had to go do some ADR uh, when I was uh, doing looping stuff, you know, like right. for the movie. When I was actually in New York working on uh, the Grand Theft Auto thing I did, which is also very cool. Yes. Grand Theft Auto Online. I had two of those come out, one in uh, December and one in February or March. But uh, yeah, the you know, spoiler alert, my <laughs> death sequence is, is pretty awesome. That's what I did uh, looping on and I thought it came out great. So, nice. You sent me a text of uh, a still from it with you oh, no. with a full arrow through your <laughs> cheek. So like the Steve Martin bit. But through the mouth, which is like, <laughs> I'm going to take genius and just kind of work on it a little bit. Boom. There you go. Well, what was challenging about that, which was funny, is the, uh, the guy that did the, uh, the special effects, I mean, the, yeah, the special effects stuff was was great. Uh, they were lucky to have him. But that particular thing was very difficult because I had to hold my face in this certain position that you'll see in that photo to keep it looking like one side wasn't sagging or the other oh, side. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to put, uh, I had to put like a, a sponge thing up my cheek too to raise it up. So it was like very uncomfortable. <laughs> oh no! But, but it, the shot looks great, right there. That, you can find that clip. You can find that clip online already too of when I get shot in the face. They released nice. that uh, as a sneak peek thing. So if you wanted to see that, somebody wants to see that, they could. But yeah, that was. Uh, <laughs> That was a challenge, to say the least. That's so cool, and we'll uh, we'll we'll post uh, uh, that on the uh, on the page on socials, as well. Yeah. yeah. Again, th that makes me even more baffled. Like, if you're throwing out teasers with you in it, clearly as a draw in, why are you not out so at South by? 
Right. <laughs> yeah, right. That, that, Come that, on. That, you've summed it up, right? Uh, yeah. Up. But that, but that's sort of how the, this whole thing went for some reason. Lulu Wilson, who's the lead in it, was great to work with. She's super cool. And Sean Scott Williams as well. But they really, really pretty much focused on them pretty much through the whole thing. That was yeah. pretty much their attitude, which I don't know why. It's like we're all in the game together, right? Yeah. So, but whatever. They chose to play the game wherever they chose to play the game. But uh, yeah, I think it would have been classy to fly me out to South by. That's yeah. All I gotta say. At the very least. <laughs> and 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 you know what? Because you, we're we're friends, I will say it for you if you don't want to. Career body of work wise, yeah, <laughs> you're you're leading that mountain. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, I mean, yes. Yeah, obviously, Sean's got a huge body of work, and, and and she's she's like she's really on the up and come right now and stuff. But yeah, it's just, it's just it, you know, look, it all starts at the top in movies. If the producers are cool, right. then that's how things go. And if the producers aren't cool, that's how things go. So that's all I got to say about that. That's you're a fucking pro, man. I just I gotta say, like, I love it. Um, so let's let's go ahead and let's dive into some of the uh, more spicy, more fun reviews that we found online for some of your your movies. And now, before you do this one, I gotta tell that I, I'm pretty sure I told I told you guys a story, but I gotta tell the story first of my first review because you did you oh, didn't yes. find the one about the guy in ABC. No, right? I tried, I tried so right. hard to I find that. I, I don't think it exists online. So, but so yeah, here's the story. So obviously, first film, Showed in the Corn. There was this big review guy. I don't remember his name that was on you know the local abc news station in los angeles yep. and he reviewed the movie and this is yeah, I remember back in the 80s when horror was not mainstream and, and not thought well of and he said uh that i read my lines like i was reading a laundry list <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus. and i was like 18 years old and that and this guy see this guy on tv like you know for years and years and years and i was just like shocked and crushed you know mm. though you know in his defense i was uh th they were pretty um we had a dialect coach who made sure i was pronouncing things very clearly and maybe so maybe i did sound like i was reading a lot of huh. <laughs> i don't know all i can say in hindsight is you know that that guy's not on tv anymore and we're still talking about the film so Boom. take yeah. that yeah. yeah no you've got you've got the ultimate cultural mic drop on that yeah, like yeah, exactly exactly so, it, so there you, you go if you say four certain words your face pops up in everybody's brain that's a win yeah like that's that's Do the that. ultimate win <laughs> In looking through some of, of the, the films, now, by the way, if, if out there somehow you've been hit on the head and don't know oh, right. movies yeah, at all. People may not, uh, they may not know my name. They'll know my face. Yeah, give them some credits. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so Malachi from Children of the Corn is what we'll kind of lead with on that. You were in a little movie called Burbs. A yeah, Burbs. A small indie feature known as Back to the Fucking Future. Yeah, that did okay, didn't it? I think yeah. it has some legs. <laughs> I'm not sure. You were in Can't Buy Me Love, which people in, in my age bracket know very, very well. We've got uh, Colors, which, I mean, really, it's, it's a good, good movie. The Ice T song is probably what's best remembered from it. Mm -hmm. it's, a True that. it's a badass fucking song, though. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just, just a little smattering. Of course, Plus, love Sweet Home awesome. Alabama, That's right. Rat Boy, Halloween. Rat Boy. <laughs> I mean... Dude, when, when we were going through IMDb and I saw Rat Boy, again, I got... <laughs> we squealed with the light. I was like, oh my God, I love that movie. I, I, I don't know if I've ever even seen that scene. I Dude, may have. Really? Maybe once. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen that movie. In my, in my produced it, so I didn't get to meet him, unfortunately. Oh, that sucks. In my uh, in my younger days, like that was, that was a great movie. Yeah, I saw it in theaters, but then that was one of the early like HBO yeah movies that they just played and played and played. So I watched the shit out of that well, movie. Well, maybe now that you know that you can see anything online, basically, is True. push your phone, push your little thing and say, "Show me this movie." Where is it playing? Like you know, if on Netflix or Hulu. It's pretty amazing. Maybe I'll look it up and see if I can find it. I've been. Really I've been find, seeing some stuff I hadn't seen that, that, that was on there that I thought was obscure. So, yeah, there's still stuff I haven't seen. You know what I want to say, though, before we do the critique? Yeah. Is because I, I, I think this is relevant, and I may have said this to you guys before, actually, but, um, you know, critics have never shown me much love in my career. You know, which is it, you know, which is it, it's kind of interesting. But I always feel like I feel like there's two camps and like sort of the reality of it all. There's like actors who got street cred and mm -hmm. actors who like get critical acclaim, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. There's some, there's some who get critical acclaim that you know on, on the streets people don't like them or don't think they're that good, right. you know. But they get but they get it. However, that works, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's people who got street cred. Now there's there's not that many actors who get both, which I think is interesting. And the True. person that comes to mind who I think really gets both, which is one of my manager's clients, Malcolm McDowell. Oh God. 
love that guy who who literally gets both, right? Of course, you know, he does conventions and people love him and he's got complete street cred, but he's also, everybody knows he's brilliant. And like the first thing he ever did, he won uh, the first uh, movie, if he at 26 years old, he won best actor at at con. So like, you know, you he started with like the highest critical review you could get and just had this like, you know, 50 year career, (laughs) but not that many people really get both, you know? So that being said, uh, no matter how bad this gets, I know that I've got street cred. No, absolutely. (laughs) And, and, and to roll that, to roll that through to a couple of different industries that I've been associated with. So in the music industry, that is absolutely true where you have the bands that are freaking like, you know, uh, God rhyme with Nickelback that are the <laughs> the huge sellers fucking you know i have a, a gold toilet then you have the bands that are out there at festivals at shows touring constantly that all other bands are like i want that band with me on tour because holy hell are they awesome there's a, a discord between that and not a lot of them you know come up through the ranks equally like that and then with podcasts pixie as you and i have talked about there are some podcasts that are wildly wildly critically number one on apple podcasts with people who cannot fucking podcast to save their lives absolutely not and then you have ones that are underheard under known about but with creative geniuses sitting in the controls like you guys i know (sighs) i set you up (laughs) you knock them down (laughs) but also but but also that even goes for restaurants you know what else that goes oh, for? Oh, sure. You know, there's absolutely yeah, those, those big, famous, popular restaurants that everybody's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. But then you're like, I, I, I wouldn't eat here with your mouth. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just like sometimes things are overhyped. And yeah. however that, you know, obviously that works with, you know, whatever the, you got a big machine behind you that's right. making sure you get you hyped up. Then, you know, and then some people buy it, right? Some people do and some people don't. That's the interesting thing. You know, yeah. some people can fix it themselves and this and that. But so, yeah, I just thought that was, I just felt that needed to be said before we heard. No, absolutely. Somebody, absolutely. These assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's perfectly applicable. Um, I've personally done um, Walker Stalker and Spooky, um, actually doing horror show work. And one of the big exciting things is that we get to meet these movie stars. One of the things that happens just like in our restaurants is all the people I work with come back and go, wow, he's a real fucking asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, oh, she's such a prima donna. Yeah. I think like Danny Trejo was like the only one. <laughs> Daddy's yeah, awesome. Trey, I was, I was like, you're not gonna say anything bad about daddy. Right? No, 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 he was daddy. actually he was <laughs> he was one of the ones that was absolutely wonderful. There was also the guy who did um Jason, whose name escapes me now. He kept calling me Karen. And uh he's like, <laughs> Over- I'm just gonna call you Karen. I'm gonna call you Karen all night. And I'm like, that's fine. Yeah, and I absolutely got hammered with him, forgot my bank card, and apparently <laughs> I was Karen. There you go. Hey, <laughs> did you did you did you have big girl pores? Because if you're Karen, you have to have your big girl pour. Oh, no, it was it was a <laughs> horror convention. It was, you're going to do a, a shot, right? There you go. Movie stars are pressing you for a shot. <laughs> you're going to do a shot. One. Yeah, there's those guys. There's definitely, at, at horror shows, there's definitely guys who get way, way hammered at the shows, too. That's for, oh, yeah. That's for sure. One, uh, one of the movies that I had found reviews for online, but I had never heard of, and I just kind of wanted to ask you about in general uh, because the review was so interestingly bad, and I'm not familiar with the movie that I needed to ask I'm, you. I'm guessing the movie Discipline. Yes! Yeah. Yes, Courtney! I, I didn't see how it couldn't be that movie. So. <laughs> let, let me give the review that piqued all of my interest, and it's for a college professor, Jack, or for a college project, sorry, Jack, Mr. Courtney Gaines, plans on recording human screams and combine them into music, sex, and pain, the theme for his college professor. Uh, Jack wants to record live screams and travels around with a police scanner. Later, he finds his way into seedy underground of torture to collect his screams. Oh, wow. Fuck if that doesn't draw me in. Uh, yeah, I said for you, that's right up your alley. I yeah, I just, that, it's right I'd, there. I'd say as as a career choice, it was pretty brilliant. I think. <laughs> well, it landed you here, so come on. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so here's the. St- I gotta tell you, yeah, I gotta tell you a story about this now because this is this is one of the crazier uh, experiences I ever had. So, I got approached by this guy. Uh, his name was Martin Mayo, and uh, about this film, and he, and he you know he gave a great pitch, and and we ended up doing it. Here's the thing. It took, and this is no kidding, it's, it's, it, this is the lo- longest thing that's ever taken from beginning to end to get done. It took 15 years. Jesus. Wow. Uh, we had shot most of it, and then he was supposed to finish it, and then we shot another piece, and then we were about to shoot to finish it, and his uh, 
apartment, which had all the editing equipment caught on fire and burned oh to the God. ground. I mean, like, you name it, it happened, right? So, like, literally, like, I have long hair in it. And then by the time we were shooting at the end, I, I, you know, I didn't have long hair. Like, I'm having to wear this, like, horrible wig. I mean, it was just, like, bad. Oh God. I remember one time we went to shoot, I think the, we, when we went to reshoot, like, 10 years later, we showed up downtown LA to shoot. And everybody was there, but the camera didn't arrive. <laughs> oh no <laughs> i mean it was like that kind of you like name it like crazy stuff it happened now here's the last and weirdest part it took this guy his like life to make this movie right, right. he finally finishes it and we actually did a screening in los angeles like a premiere thing and it actually got on like local news and they were favorable and i couldn't believe any of that even happened and then within months he died oh, so it was his opus Jesus. man this was like it was his, this his, thing, it was his cane yeah yeah, wow. this crazy little film uh, took you, yeah, and then he finished it, and then he died. Maybe that's why it took so long, because if he'd finished it quickly, he would have died a lot quicker. I don't there you know. go. Yeah. He's trying to bleed it out. But you know what I say? I say take that, Richard Linklater. <laughs> All right? I see your boyhood, and I raise you. The premise almost reminds me of um, Strangeland. But These... Yeah, I didn't really know much. You know, got into definitely into the whole S and M community, which I didn't know much about at the time. One of the things about being an actor that's interesting is that you get to do research about things that you would never do research on, as it right. were. I remember got invited to go to this symposium, but it was you know from this S and M society and everything, and they were talking about relationships and dominatrices and da 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 da. da. And I was like, okay, I'm getting this intellectually. And at the break, this guy comes up to these other this couple and goes, so here's your cat of nine tails that I made for you and I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like the guy picks up and he's and he's, he was kind of this demure guy and the, the girl seemed like the dominant one honestly and he starts waving this thing around and all of a sudden he just starts puffing up you know and then all of a sudden she starts to turn demure and like yeah, gives him her ass and he starts whacking her with this fucking cat of nine tails like right in front of me and getting you know welts on her ass you know what wow. i mean like this was not this was nasty but i watched this whole power change take place wow right it, and i realized at that point that's what there's the, the key about. right actually, yeah and actually in the movie i talked to him to let me do this monologue at the end where i actually had the short hair by then and to talk about that because i thought that that in essence that's what the you know the s right. is about because you know, i've learned that you know in fact many of the submissives are actually very very powerful people like judges and lawyers and people have to make really big decisions like that mm -hmm. and that they then they want to go somewhere where they get to be dominated yeah. which is yeah. really psychologically very interesting it's fascinating you know but yeah it is fascinating and that's what are the movies good, bad, or indifferent? That particular part of it was pretty fascinating. It's not not my cup of tea, but I think I understand the scene now. You know? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And actually, that to to me, that kind of opens a light for me on the the process that yeah. as the receptor, as the movie going audience, you know, we take certain things from movies that we've seen good, bad, or indifferent. And I don't know that I've ever turned that and thought of what is it that the actors are taking away from that experience, not just like the role, like, cause you get a lot of like, Oh, you know, you're this person and, and they see you as one character or, or one role. So, you know, right. yes, you take that with you, but, what behind that do the actors take well, with them? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, for me, that's when people say, what is your favorite part about acting? It's a travel. I got to go to, I've gotten to go all over the world and, and they scout the best locations. So I get to see these crazy places and, and that's all great because you get to spend time with different people in different cultures. But also it's, it's the, yeah, it's the inquiry into what, you know, what makes this particular type of character tick. Right. Right. And hopefully the idea is you come out of it. Very few people get the opportunity to walk in somebody else's shoes. As yeah. the saying goes though. Right. But yeah. very few people ever take the time and or get the opportunity. And I mean, I'll give a small example. You know, like I grew up in tough neighborhoods, so I was able to play that character in colors. You know, I, right. I, I grew up in that shit. But when I was becoming that character, all of a sudden the graffiti on the walls like made sense. It, I just didn't see it. Right. I understood it. I right. understood where it was coming from. And that's what you get when you dive into somebody. You get to see it through their eyes. And you're never the same. You never come out the same. You have a different level of compassion than you would otherwise. That's fucking awesome. fascinating to yeah. me. That's fucking fascinating to me. And it and is the whole like difference between I, I listen to it or or I hear it. Yeah. Right? I can listen to something, mm. whatever, but do you actually hear it? And that's the difference right there. That's fucking cool as shit. God damn. All right. So now it's time to get Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now now let's get back <laughs> to the goofy shit. Okay. I'm going to start just sort of straight in with one just because there's so many juicy tidbits of it. And you actually got to work with um, some other iconic actors from like 70s, 80s productions. And of course, 
I mean candy corn. I was gonna say it gotta be candy corn. Yep. <laughs> yep. So let's see here. Let me let me dive in on this one. This one is this film doesn't even try to be original. I'm gonna read it by the way in, in the same vein that we do bad restaurant reviews, just because it's funnier to it's think just gonna of be snarky. A, a pissed off person who Please do it. Who, you know, their chicken was dried <laughs> out and it's the fucking death of, of life. All right. The cliches flow one after another, even for a low budget. It lacks anything of merit. Here's my favorite wow. line. Favorite line, the whole thing. The freak show has zero customers, exclamation mark, question mark. The sheriff is useless and his son's acting is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so far, that's about more about the movie than about me. So, yeah, I, can't, I don't have to take that personally at all, you know? Because <laughs> I, I, I kind of agree the sheriff is kind of useless. He's, he's sort of... Uh, He's always one step behind and never solves anything. So, yeah, I can't, I can't really argue that point. <laughs> Tony Todd, PJ Souls, and Courtney Gaines can't save this piece of garbage. But again, <laughs> none of them have been known for their acting abilities, have they? Oh! Question oh! mark, exclamation mark, question mark. They're so angry and confused. All I got to say is, let's, whoever this person is, say that to Tony Todd's face. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> that's what I got to say. No say shit. That to Tony. That's, I mean, I'm actually more offended for him and PJ. That's outrageous. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't know if he took a shot at me, but like, you know, first of all, PJ still has had a really good career. But Tony's like walked the line between doing like mainstream mm -hmm. successful TV and film and horror. I mean, like, yep. yes, he has, you know, yes, he's candy man. And yes, he has a, a huge horror following, but that guy's done a lot, a lot of work. So good thing this person wasn't the casting director or the director of any of these projects that thought Tony was worthy of being hired. Right, like, no shit. You know, for the last 40 years. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason that he's a draw. And, and the work he actually does at Candy Corn, he doesn't have a giant part, but he makes some really, he makes some really he interesting choices with that character. I mean, <laughs> he was actually really interesting, I thought. So I, I, I yeah, I'm offended for those two more than I'm for myself. <laughs> I like the uh, the flea circus not having anyone the there. Freak, or the, the freak, freak circus. That's what that's, that's what it makes me think it's, of though. It's is kind that kind of true that there isn't a lot of because there was no budget for extras. So, right. Yeah. You're yeah. Right. That there's not many but, people at the show. But if you're but, picking nits, like really, that's yeah. the hill you want to die on. That's it. Makes me think of when I went to Ohio and I saw the real life flea circus billboards though and i'm like because that's a huge draw in <laughs> 2011 in Ohio. yeah okay. everyone's gonna that's just true. bum rush that flea circus i was like i kind of want to go kind of want to see what they got going on <laughs> small fleas so it's so tiny <laughs> There's a all right. Let's we got another one. We got another can. I I, I know there was another really bad. Like, some guy really shredded me bad on Candy Corn. I remember that. This one that I found, which again is is a little bit more with the like overall of the movie, just because it's so fucking over the top in their bullshit on this. Um, oh, that's here. You could rub this film with forty grit sandpaper, and it's still flaccid, trite. And an underwhelming piece of crap. Oh my god! Classic. <laughs> wow. You just want a rock hard dildo in there, don't you? You brought flaccid into this. <laughs> what are you doing? How dare you mock my heart on? <laughs> this is. I spent ten dollars a pill on this. What are you doing? You know, just between us <laughs> girls. Yes. You're, we all know you're not supposed to mention that it's flaccid. That's true. You don't bring it up. <laughs> it's perfectly it's fine. Just classy. It's a good size. Yeah, it's classy no just no. to not say it. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> 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 they also they also then throw in gratuitous nudity scene that brings nothing to the story. Well, there's your not being flaccid. That's, that's, <laughs> but that's exactly that's, what gratuitous nudity is. That's that's called horror film. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and sir, sir or madam, I am pissed at you for bringing in for trying to sully the name of some good gratuitous nudity. If you're not, yeah, if you're not into gratuitous nudity, then do not watch. Why are you in that genre? Yeah, why are you in the genre? Sixty and beyond. <laughs> They're all gratuitous horror. Oh my god. <laughs> the, uh, now, see, I remember this guy, and I, and I was I was counting on that you were going to bring this one in there. You must not have found it. This guy basically just says, I can't remember the details, but it's something to the effect of like, all this guy can play is creeps. That's all I've ever, I've seen him in this, and I, I like him as a creep, but I did not want to see him playing a cop, you know? And I thought like, I thought like, you know, that's kind of like, I want to like, 
punch that dude because it was just like you know I, I felt like he wasn't a critic he was a troll yeah yeah, yeah. like yeah. saying like i only want to see you and not that i don't do creeps well i agree with that but like i'm only gonna see you in this box and this box and that's only it. And anything else i don't that's not that's not a critic and that's not something who's informed no that like you know like i've done like like say like a camp by me love or or Sweet Home Alabama, or I actually... Right. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, you were like, a cop, for fuck's sake. Yeah, I loved you in Sweet Home it's, Alabama. It's just like, you're not even making an informed comment. You're just trying to be a troll. Yeah. So I, I, I didn't enjoy that one. That one made me mad. Yeah, at this point, you're just being a dick. Yeah, not even really a critic. I'm like, uh, you're getting... You're writing shit in your mom's basement, right? Like, you're not... <laughs> it just makes me think of someone coming to their restaurant and being like, Boomer's only good making salads i don't like him so much as a manager i can't see him i doing just that. like him doing salads yeah right yeah, i feel like exactly. that's your only wheelhouse i mean or exactly. <laughs> or just be the manager of the night and do discounts <laughs> 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 all right um let's do um do you want to rock one here pixie um yeah, you know what? I will. I actually, I want to get into a bit of the Children of the Corn, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. We have some oh, really yeah. good ones with that. So we have, you know, them talking about, uh, obviously, Stephen King's Children of the Corn coming out in 1984, the year I was born. Sad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it says, you know, he had some slow starts after Carrie. Um, took about four years for some of his properties to take off there. The Shining, obviously, in 1980. And then uh, he hit in the mid-80s a uh, five-year stretch of 13 releases and um while some of them you know have distinguished efforts obviously like stand by me the dead zone there were others that were kind of junky and rather than classy you know and it was a maximum overdrive silver bullet and of course children Children of the corn corn. (laughs) nice yeah yeah it says with the uh Promising premise, ultimately no match for the slapdash visual effects and dunderheaded protagonist. Oh. Yeah. And amateur amateur performances from some of the young actors. Now, I got to say, Ouch. why would the young actors be anything but 100% professional? Right? Yeah. Well, I actually thought the extras were actually uh, in it, where who were like high school drama kids were actually great. I think it's like, right. Yeah, I actually surprised. I still to this day when I watch them, I'm surprised how good they all are. Like I think that like they actually went for it. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to work they, so much harder. It seemed like they got what they were doing. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, they were just you could just see they were into it. Like yeah. like even Fritz Kirst, the director, talks about like when they go and like in that scene in the corner, people they're all all saying like. He's like, I didn't tell him to do that. He just did it. Oh no, <laughs> shit! Like, like they were getting into it. You wow. know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I, I yeah, and yeah, and I don't know the other younger actors. I mean, what me and me and John. I mean, John's done a Mr. John Franklin's done yeah. a right for himself. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Robbie yeah. Robbie Keeger was already working a ton at that point, so he was he was certainly not an amateur by any stretch. He uh, he got paid pretty good for that movie. I remember because he just I think he was he's he had a series he just come off of and something else. So, shit. Yeah, he was he was. He, he was good, but uh, but you know, I, I agree with the effects. The effect at the end is yeah, horrible. with the the red it, it, mist well, it or whatever. Like, well, the the clouds are actually cool. Yeah, I actually like and, that. But 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 I found out that that's because I I recently just did two or three about uh, three Q and A things with Fritz Kirsch, the director, where we did a we did a commentary as we watched the movie, and then oh, cool. it was really it was really interesting because you know he directed it, so it was like there was a lot we didn't know about it. Those actual clouds were from a Kawasaki commercial he had done that then he, he no stole shit. and put in the movie. Nice. Uh, shit. And uh, but the end part where like the when yeah when it's like the the, the you know whatever it's supposed to be in the cornfield finally sort of exposes itself in the fire. I always say it looked like the Grinch. It was terrible. It looked yeah. like a cartoon of the Grinch. I said, <laughs> in '84, I thought that. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he who walks behind or walks behind yeah, the rose. He, that's he, what it was. He, he, you build up for this whole thing, and like then there's you know you sort of get this glimpse of the creature, and it would look it looked like a crayon drawing. I mean that was bad. I mean I, I mean in '84 it was bad. You was, know? so it's like how bad must it look now? You know? Was that like a, a just ran out of that money just, thing, or just, just couldn't budget. do it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was just budget. Ran out of money. You know, no money to begin with. Yeah. Jesus. I, I mean, you know, uh, huh. yeah. So that's but yeah. I think that was where the film was probably the most short change was that end the end. Yeah, which you know, if 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 
if if that big third act reveal is flat, that's what people remember. Honestly, you know? I yeah. I think that um, some people could really benefit from the less is more because just making sense of that whole like we kind of like leave it wanting can be really creepy on its own. I think the kids in that were absolutely terrifying. I thought it was great, but um, yeah. yeah, the whole this whole review at the end here it gets. Um, so he made great use of the desolate landscape, but the story gets sloppier and sillier as it proceeds. <laughs> <laughs> sloppier and sillier, okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't realize you weren't done at that point. I oh no, I no, you're good. Long. I wouldn't have talked so long in between the critiques. <laughs> you're no, why no. we're here, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a, it, you know, it's, it's an interesting. It's an interesting. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, the movie, I mean, when the movie got came out, like I said, horror movies were considered what they were, you know, B-movies, you know? Yeah, they were they were and, ghettoized pretty pretty so, quickly as so so thrown away. So they were there to be trash, right? I mean, for sure. And I think that who, who you know, who would have, who would have, any of those people, at the, you know, talking about it at the time, who of them would have imagined that the movie would still be talked about, you know, 40 years later? And, and be that, relevant. You know, and, and that John Frank and I would be, voted like in like the top you know uh 10 i think john's number one 10 scariest kids of all time and i think oh, my shit. characters voted and i think my characters voted like top 50 scary horror characters of all time i mean yeah you know, my like, my friend named like, her wow. son malachi actually uh, because of children of the corn <laughs> Every time I hear somebody name their cat or their dog, <laughs> much less their kid, I'm like, so you know you're asking for it, right? Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. And he you is a, a terror. Yourself. He's a special you. kid. Don't he really me. is. You. <laughs> you named this kid Malachi. <laughs> I've, got, um, I've got another one here that um, ugh, I like. This is a really, really long-winded review, so I'm going to just kind of hit the better parts of it as it goes. In doing their little nothing occurring in Children of the Corn, is anything resembling normal? And they kind of go through the scene. Unfortunately, a brewing conflict between Isaac, the crazed pastor, and Malachi, the teenage rebel drunk on bloodlust, escalates and intervenes as the in the impending sacrifice of Vicky, as Isaac replaces Vicky on the stock, soon to be absorbed by a cartoonish special effect that comes bubbling out of the soil. Here we go. Here's Agreed. the sweet spot. Agreed. Pretty cartoonish. Right? Yes. I, I laugh at it every time. <laughs> <laughs> the movie is a long, tiresome, dim-witted slog through its material. No <laughs> attempt is made to create resonant personalities. The adults occupied on the screen by two competent mainstream actors, Peter Horton and Linda Hamilton, are never engaged in the conflict, instead commenting on it as if scientists studying a rat maze from a safe distance. The young stars, meanwhile, are never modulated. It's as if the director simply points the camera in their direction and encourages them to be flamboyant like victims of Ritalin overdoses. <laughs> I got to say, that's kind of terrifying. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Courtney Gaines offers a more pointed offense. His Malachi, a teenager hell-bent on destruction and violence, is like a vessel of chaos without the foundation. And there's never a moment where he isn't seen frozen in a state of hysterical overkill. The younger stars, meanwhile, have the distinction of attempting to seem sincere and innocent in the midst of so much mayhem, but just look more clueless than informed. Wow. These are children. That That's fucking savage. <laughs> when was that one written? Uh, that was actually from, da, 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 sorry, let me go through here, like, 04. Okay. So yeah, that was say, there was no riddle in an eighty. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that was that was that was two thousand and four. So I guess yeah. a, a twenty year uh, look back. <laughs> Jesus, doesn't man. That seem weird? That, doesn't that seem weird into itself? Like I'm gonna write about a movie twenty that we know about twenty years later, right? But and trash it, tough. right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's almost as if they're trying to make money off trashing it. What? what? I know. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I was going to say there was a, there was also a, a a Roger Ebert review that, oh, um, yeah, yeah, I have that one. <laughs> yeah, that that read, read it. Let's hear what they said. Oh my god, this actually made me angry for you as I was reading, and I actually had to uh, tell Boomer. I'm like, 
dude, like I want to actually contact this guy and just rip him apart for his review. Other than the fact that he's dead, which, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, we'll reach through the I grave. They, they, I remember they did a pretty bad review of the Burbs, too. Yeah, they yeah. did. They did. Yeah. Um, and I think I have that somewhere in here. Well, so Let's hear what they had to say about Corin. Let's hear it. So they say that uh, they're talking about, you know, obviously the thing behind the rose and, you know, that it has great influence over the kids and does a little premise of the movie. And then it says, if <laughs> if the thought even for one fleeting second crosses your mind that somebody should have reported all the missing adults, the, you were wrong. You're in the wrong movie. Yeah. This <laughs> movie, yeah. apparently a town where no adult, um, I'm sorry. Where nowhere of the adults was made made or, or received a long distance phone call. They had no charge cards or no out of town relatives, and no one knew they were missing. Then maybe they deserve to die. The kids in the town, led by a shrill voiced little girl and a mean little boy who looked like a miniature adult and talks like he has helium in his mouth, speaking in pseudo biblical English, kind of a king. King James, James version, version, a.k.a. Stephen King James, all about evil interlopers and how he who lives behind the corn must be appeased. There's a grimly, <laughs> yeah, yeah gr grisly symbolic crucifixion at the nighttime ceremony in the fields and then a weird creature plowing over the underground. So, yeah. That's my favorite part of the special effects. I love that part. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks killer. And, and then at the end, he just says, by the end of Children of the Corn, the only thing moving behind the rows is the audience fleeing, fleeing to towards the, the exits. exits. <laughs> so take that. When I got to the point about charge cards, I lost my shit because I moved to North Carolina in like the early to mid 2000s. And when I was going around and asking everybody where to get cable, everyone's response in this entire town was, we don't know, we just steal it. <laughs> so I'm like, man, this is 84. You think that that's not plausible? It's totally plausible. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it's a good point. I've never, I've never heard anybody say it, I guess, to be honest, I sort of thought, yeah, that's pretty, uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty obvious in terms of like, yes, you know, why, how would, how would you kill all these people and nobody ever check it out? So, I, I, I get it. Suspension it, of disbelief, legit, though, you know? Yeah, I get it. It's that's legit. You know the thing <laughs> that I always when you talk about back to like critics versus street cred, you know, like like the street cred for me is you know how many kids when they saw me ran to their mothers crying? Or you know how many people have come up to me and tell me Do you know how many people have come up to me and told me they had nightmares of my character? Um, yeah, th this guy. <laughs> yeah, now so I say to myself, Okay, you know, you're you know, you've got your critique of the movie, good, bad, or indifferent. But if I was able, as a character, to get into somebody's subconscious, seriously, yeah, yes, that's pretty successful, no? And that's that's, wouldn't you say that's a good job acting in the role? Like by must definition, have done, must have done something right, right? Yeah, right? exactly, right? Exactly, not exactly fumbling for a lighter in the darkness on this one. I was, I, I, I just find that part interesting. You know, it's like again, there's the reality of. And that was, you know, that was the crazy stuff when the movie first came out, seeing people have these, like, reactions, you know, yeah. I was not, I was not prepared for little kids going crying to their mothers, you know what I mean? Like, I really <laughs> yeah. was not uh, prepared for that mentally, you know, so I, I, it really taught me, what it taught me was the power of cinema. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You and, know, good, bad, or indifferent, what you put out there can influence people, you know, and you know, no doubt about it. And to your point, you know, earlier about how in the 80s, you know, horror movies were considered B movies and they were considered less than, but clearly the the performances were still affecting. The performances still did things and created all of what you see now today, right? Well, yeah, yeah, they influence other movies but for right. sure. But, but I bet if, if you had asked, you know, Siskel and Ebert in 1980 if they would have thought horror would have been mainstream by now, I would oh, they think they would have definitely said not a chance, right? So Yeah, yeah absolutely. No one, I don't think they saw it coming, you know what I mean? And, and neither did I, right? I mean, I would have never imagined that, you know, this is, we'd be talking about this, you know, the, the 40th anniversary is next year, you know? Jesus. Um, yeah, crazy, and we're, we're still talking about it, and people are still you know, making art, you know, people send me, you know, I get sent artwork and, you know, it was, I was, uh, Malachi characters recently put on a, an album cover that was a re, re, a reissue of the music. I think the music's nice. good. People don't ever, you know, music yeah. in the movies, I think very good. That guy went on to make several 
uh, Stephen King uh, scores. Nice. Uh, uh, but you know that we'd still be that people would be still be reissuing you know the movie, still reissuing the music. It is you know I would have never never in a million years thought we'd still this would still have the legs it has. Yeah. Yeah. And and to that point, even uh, you were you guys were playing a set at uh, our restaurant not too long ago. And I saw a guy who came up to you in between who had his VHS copy. Oh my god! Yes, of Children Sign of the Corn his, to have you autographed. VHS. Yeah. Yep. And he gave us uh, some T-shirts. I think he has a store there. And and then he and he brought his wife back to meet me uh, on uh, Mother's Day. See? Super cool. <laughs> yeah. Like come. So, on, I mean, so come on, man. Cool. Let me do one more. Let me do the Burbs. Uh, oh, just that's one of my favorites. This is just objectively, it's a good fucking movie. And you got to you. It was a murderer's row of actors in it as well. Like you, you. Right. I, I don't know that you could cast a film better. So yeah. this is uh, your your hometown L.A. Times at the uh, at the t <laughs> at the time of uh, release. All right. It's a safe bet that Universal slated the Burbs for its citywide opening today, hoping that Tom Hanks could get nominated for an Oscar for Big. Certainly, this grimly unfunny comedy needs all the help that it can get. It's so bad, it doesn't deserve the boost of a Hanks nomination that it might get. <laughs> wow. Whatever persuaded Hanks, especially now that he has hit his stride as an actor and comedian of the first rank, to do this picture? Question mark. For that matter, why was this turkey ever given the green light in the first place? Yeah, parenthetical, didn't anyone remember Columbia's wretched, all-too-similar 81 Belushi Aykroyd Neighbors? Which, again, I, I think, actually I think that movie's yeah. unfairly maligned, but that's me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. what, what, was that, what was it that savvy director Joe Dante saw in co-producing Dana Olson's script? It's inconceivable that the Burbs looked good on paper. Yet its its makers are far from amateurs. Now again, Murderer's Row here. Yeah. It was the first movie financed by Brian Grazer and Ron Howard. Oh their, Jesus, I didn't know that. Yeah, their Imagine Entertainment. That was the first Holy fucking Jesus. movie. Yes. So you know, only one of like the biggest Hollywood production houses wow. there is. One of the most respected ever. So yeah. Um, the initial production in the company's multi-picture distribution deal with Universal. So much for speculation. What we're confronted with is the endlessly labored spectacle of three grown men behaving like little boys when a weirdo family, a Bella Lugosi-like doctor, his surly monosyllabic brother, and a dim-witted, goofy-looking <laughs> kid moves into the ramshackle Victorian in their cul-de-sac in Hinkley Hills. Parentheses, uh... True, the newcomers do seem to have installed a particularly ferocious furnace in the cellar. At any rate, <laughs> uh, at any rate, the three men get completely carried away when an elderly man who lives at the end of their cul-de-sac disappears. Why don't they, or at least Hank's marginally, marginally sensible wife, Carrie Fisher, or, and this is the first and only time this has ever been said, their bright teenage neighbor, Corey Feldman. Yeah, that's not a word I associate <laughs> with Corey Feldman. <laughs> Just goes to prove acting. Uh... Call the cops or check with Gordon's daughter as to his whereabouts. Not only is there nothing amusing or frightening about the men's foolishness, but there's no discernible point to it, except perhaps to suggest that the dullness of suburbia can rot your brain. A momentary plea for tolerance gives way to the apparent proposition that it's all right to torment your different neighbors because they may be a bad lot and up to no good after all. It's hardly a wholesome message to send to the impressionable young audiences for whom this film is primarily intended. The Burbs, rated PG, is the pits. <laughs> Fuck me, running. I mean... They that got is everything scathing. in that. They yeah. got everything in that, including the pearl clutching somebody think about the children. Yep. Up, down, left, yeah. right, center. Jesus. B A B A start. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> My I God. Heard, I never heard that one before. That's really awesome. Dude, that uh, was a lot. So, as, as a, a dim witted, goofy looking I, well, <laughs> child. I can't argue with what the fuck, I think man? That character was dim witted and goofy. So, that, that, was, that was accurate. But, but, but uh, the point. That was the point. <laughs> Yes, yes, but uh, 
you know, you ultimately you just have to say like that guy didn't get it, right? Because yeah. you know, much to my surprise, when I started doing you know conventions of uh, gosh, now oh, 15, 16 years ago or something, and I came with just you know some children of corn pictures. I figured that's all anybody would want. The, my number two seller is, is the Burbs. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and and there and there are some like die hard Burbs fans out there. Oh, I yeah. mean, like die hard. Like there are people who you know tell me like they watch it like once a month. There, wow. There are people. There are people who had me like call their mother. You tell your mom because like my mom's depressed. That's oh the God. movie she watches. Oh my God. Yeah, it was actually I mean, my family's to go. Like, um, there was a take five video that was at the end of our block. And I got to say, that was one of our big Friday night movie rentals was The Burbs. And, that, and that's the other thing, particularly people that obviously have that horror sensibility that are you know, coming to these conventions. It seemed to be like the Gap movie that they could watch with their parents. Yeah. Like they could enjoy and their parents could enjoy. It was like somehow, it, 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 you know, it, the generations could, ha- could agree on this one. Right. Which, and- which I which then became like if you were to say oh, you look but you think back sentimentally about it like ah this was like time I spent with my parents I, like you're like how does this movie have that kind of impact but but it does that's absolutely that's that's, that's, the, that's the amazing thing but it does you know and, and it, it, it just it just blows my mind you what, know? one of the things that it makes me kind of wonder in my little boomer head of mine is if that movie was released now Mm -hmm. not saying like it would you know change the course of the world or you know it was the blueprint for other things to come but now at a time where comedy and horror are so commonly mixed together that people have Mm -hmm. realized that comedy is horror horror is comedy it's the same sort of the the rhythm and all of that's the same right yeah right. right do you think that you know so Children of the Corn, I would argue, is the the more mainstream movie. The, the Burbs, mm-hmm. even though it, it, it was the big production, is the more cult classic movie. Yeah, I'd agree. But the question is, is did the Burbs actually have a little bit of the DNA in it of where we're at now with the genre mixing and you know the Ash versus Evil Dead and shit like that, that you've given the okay to to work on both sides of those two genres to bring to make something. It's probably why people are still watching it. Yeah. Exactly. And, 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 and again, at conventions now, it's you know the parent who's now it you know, was the kid who now shows their kid it, and now it's like into the third generation. Wow. Yeah. Of family connection and bird lovers, it's it's just crazy. That's awesome. That is that that that's cool. And but I agree I agree with your observation. I think that's right on. Cool. Yay. Score one for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate it. You, um, We love you. You're awesome. And, um, you know, just taking the time to uh, to be on the show has been super, super fun. And I hope at the very least we, we had uh, a little bit of a laugh for you today. Yeah. Uh, this was great. You know, I mean, I, look, I've done a lot of interviews, right? That was when, when I heard about this idea and I said, let's do this was because no one's ever done anything like this. So nice. this to me was hilarious and and fresh and different so awesome yeah it was fun well shit thank you man let's not forget to remind folks again to go find the wrath of becky amc theaters believe yeah out yep. now with uh with my friend mr courtney Gaines, with sean william scott and uh what lily uh, uh lulu, Will- lulu wilson lulu wilson there we go i apologize miss yes, lulu wilson for butchering your name <laughs> <laughs> A lot of alliteration in there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure uh, you know there'll be some bad reviews on that too. Uh, you know, in the, in the future, you, you, even if I'm not on the show, you can at least read them. You know, oh, so, no. the Courtney <laughs> Gage, the bearded dolt. <laughs> it's a beautiful beard coming from me. With that is such a beautiful beard. <laughs> stupider. No, we'll actually we'll come back to this maybe. Maybe in, in you Why know, not? you know, yeah. six months or, or something like sure. that. Maybe we'll we'll regroup. We'll find some more fun stuff, and maybe there'll be bad reviews of the podcast. And you, Courtney, can read some of the bad <laughs> reviews of the podcast, you. and we'll I'll read some I'll of read the, the bad, bad movie reviews. reviews. Awesome. Yeah, that good. You read the Wrath of Becky reviews. That's I love it. Fun. That's perfect. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. All right, y'all. In episode thirty-five of Service Entrance, people. The Courtney Gaines episode. You can become a producer today and any level of producership, be it the Florida man, the Karen, the Von Uppity, you will get free merchandise from us. 
And depending on your level of sponsorship, the more merchandise, the merrier. You also get access to all of our bonus content. If you want to be a content producer like Chef Hope and Jeff Teal, just send us your stories, serviceentrancepeople at gmail.com, or you can message us on Facebook, Service Entrance People Podcast, or you can hit us up on our DMs on Instagram at Service Entrance People Pod. Girl, who's all up in your DM? Hopefully people who are writing into this podcast for that content producer credit. You should be. Also, you can go to PayPal if you're not into the whole commitment thing and you want to do maybe, I don't know, a dollar to a million. You can hit us up at Service Entrance Peeps on the old PayPal. Don't forget, we are now on the TikToks, which is... At Service Entrance PPL. Don't forget to tell your friends, tell your family, tell a stranger on the street read in a store to listen to Service Entrance People podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I am Boomer. And I am Pixie. Adios.